I want to bring up my friend Larry. All right. Yay. Everybody, everybody loves Larry. <clears throat> All right. Larry's part of NFT Oasis. And uh, I thought it'd be fun for us to have a conversation together. Yes. And uh, I'll ask you some questions about what you're okay. working on. All right. Well, first of all, smile, I... smile for the camera, Larry. <laughs> first of all, I, I, I love this gentleman. I, we met Tuesday night. Uh, like everything in this space, he, I was told that in the very first NFT NYC, he just showed up and said, I'm going to just start interviewing everyone. Didn't ask for anything, didn't, wasn't part of it. He just showed up and said, I'm going to start. So he has amassed hundreds, if not thousands. Hundreds? Probably, probably a thousand over the five years. Thousands of interviews including like really documenting the history. Yeah, which it's, is it's been fun. Which is like the Devin and the other guys. That's right, Devin and Alex from OpenSea. Like, like when OpenSea was sort of like this sad little dinghy in a puddle and everyone was like, what's an NFT? Is that a government agency or they're going to spy on you? <laughs> and then like when they sort of got big and then they got really big. So right. I just showed up as a Rolling Stone reporter. He jumped on Clubhouse with us. I, I jumped on that, Clubhouse. That's how it all started. And I showed up as a Rolling Stone reporter a year ago, and Jody Rich just said, why don't you just come on stage with us at the town hall, like this historic place where like the women's suffrage movement started in right. New York. And, and, and he's like, who do we have next? Oh, Alexis O'Hanlon, uh, he, he founded uh, a Reddit, you right. know? And I, I, I was in the audience, and suddenly I was on stage, and that's the spirit. We talk about NFTs in the future. It's the spirit yeah. of this community right now that, that's just red hot. It is. So the talk that you have yes. is why NFTs now yes. are like 1991 internet. Yes, exactly. So here's the thing is that the big problem that we all face is friction to entry. Yes. The big problem, I, if I, we talked about meeting on Clubhouse and Clubhouse I could click on something and I was talking to him, or I was having a fight with someone, or I was suddenly like new best friends with some celebrity that, that I would never meet in right. real life. And it was just one click. And so the friction to entry, which is slowly being dissolved piece by piece, inch by inch, will eventually be the thing that takes over everything. Right. So, Time Magazine just recently did on August 15th a cover called Welcome to the Metaverse. And it was also somebody cleverly put a 1994 cover of Time Magazine which said, what's this weird thing, the internet, you yeah. know? And it was like, is it a tube? Do you listen to it? Like, you know, and, and so they put the two side by side and we're in that moment right now. Yes. So Ken Burns is the great documentarian who has studied our history, the Civil War, the Vietnam War, uh, the Holocaust, uh, great, you know, Thomas Jefferson, people like that. He talks about moments in history when lightning strikes, mm -hmm. when history goes along for a long time in one way, and then suddenly it goes straight up. And we saw it in the 15th century in, in Florence, where suddenly right. you had Botticelli and Michelangelo and Machiavelli and and Da Vinci and all of these people in one place at one time. Yeah. And it, it's, it's hot. And, right. and that's what's happening in these rooms right now, in these conversations right now, is we are in a moment that may not happen again in our lifetimes. Mm. And that's what's so special about it. So you, I, we agree. We all agree. We can clap for that. You've been through different cycles of technology. And with every cycle, you've remained an artist, not yes. just an artist as yourself, which you certainly are a very accomplished artist, but you are a co-artist with so many. Yes. Uh, for those that may not know some of the folks you worked oh, with, okay. would you mind name dropping for the sake of people sure, sure. maybe putting their phones down and listening a little bit more intently in sure. what you have sure. to share? Sure. So, you know, it's probably nothing, but you may have heard of David Bowie, Bono, Van Halen, Sean Lennon, the Beach Boys, Ricky Martin, Brandy, charitable things like the UN, World Central Kitchen, many, many others. And, and it's, it's, it's a lucky thing. I, I think we were having a conversation at lunch. I was taught by some very high level people yeah. 
about being talented and kind. Mm. And that, you know, it was Queen. Like I was a kid smoking pot, driving around, listening to like Sheer Heart Attack and Bohemian Rhapsody. And then three years later, I was opening for Queen in soccer stadiums. Right. And they were so nice. Mm. They were like, if you're on our tour, you're family. Yeah. And so that gave me a bar to shoot for. If these people can sell out stadiums, mm. can be huge stars and be thoughtful to the smallest people in the room. Like yeah. it's like being in a restaurant and being kind to the busboy clearing right. your table. Who am I to be a big shot? Mm. You know, it's an honor. Yeah. And we talked about this honor that's here right now. Yeah. And and he brought up this idea that there's an honor among all kinds of people. People came in with crazy costumes. You know, I was with Crypto Nova. He looked like someone who'd be on like the you know, when you go to the airport, they pull him off in a separate room and say, who is this guy? But It's, we're it's all, Halloween every day for Crypto yes, Nova. Yes, so it, we're all in this wonderful moment together. Yeah. So as you worked with these world-class artists yes. that have these incredible legacies, many of us uh, have been impacted by their art one way or another. You've seen all these technological revolutions happen. So in the title of your talk, you mentioned today yeah. with NFTs, is very similar to Internet 1991. Yeah. Can you talk a bit about what are the things that put wind in the sail of a creative and what are roadblocks that creatives should be aware of when these new technological advancements come on the horizon? Well, well, some of it for me as a creative. So for a long time, people sold records. Yeah. And then Steve Jobs came along and said, I can put just 10,000 songs in your pocket right. or I can put it on your phone. And things naturally evolve. And so for a long time, people had multiple sources of income. And one of the advancements was streaming. So right. I can have my music streaming. That's really exciting. The entire music business went swooping downhill for many, many years. I, I think there was some number where I, I'd have to have a million and a half streams to make a thousand dollars. Right. And then last night at the party, Spotty Wi-Fi, a, a you know, the crypto rapper star of, yeah. of this community right now, he did a drop and, and it, it sold out instantly and he made about two hundred thousand dollars. I'd have to have hundreds of millions of streams yeah. to have that. So the advantage here is that I can put out music that isn't in competition with Dua Lipa mm. or J Balvin or Drake. I can put out something that I produced 20 years ago that has rarity yeah. and utility and that's special and, and it interacts with fans rather than them just consuming it. That's good. One other piece is that if I have 10 million people listen to my song on Spotify this month, I don't know who those 10 million people are. Spotify does, yeah. they, have the, they have their emails, yeah. I don't. But if I'm here and I'm making some creative thing on any of the platforms, mm. I know who my collectors are and That's I have good. a direct relationship with them. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about NFT Oasis? Every sure. seeing this up here, I they're know. wondering, they really want to look at their phone and go to the website and find out what it is, but they're waiting for okay. you to tell them. So I, I'm, I'm supposed to be showing you a slide deck and I'm, I'm failing miserably. Is, I, it, is that what's happening? So, is this, do we need the power, Larry? So Do we need the power? Does it, just, oh, just, look at that. All right, so very quickly, NFT Oasis is a, is a very beautiful boutique metaverse that I am, I'm really just the bridge, uh, like the Secretary of State or something. I just bring people in. We're on Oculus, we're on computer, we're on, um, I'm just wondering where I clicked this to. And, and we've created all these worlds. And what we've been doing in these worlds is we've been holding concerts and talks. We, we, and, and, and it doesn't look like a Lego set from you know, a board game. It's like really beautiful work. We have these dream houses, and what we've been doing is doing art walks, and we've been launching people's careers. I met my first panel today on the art stage where I was emceeing. A woman came up to me, she said, my first ever opportunity came from being in an NFT Oasis art walk. And, I was, and, and so you see, we, we've been creating these worlds. I'm gonna stop in a moment because I know we have, time is running out, but We've created these beautiful worlds with avatars that have all kinds of skins, that have all kinds of 
special effects, all kinds of special things. And there's the missing piece. And the missing piece is when a lot of people come into Web3, they're like, give up after trying to set up a MetaMask right. or a Coinbase wallet because it's so complicated. And what do I do? And what if I don't put a comma after each right. word, my seed phrase, and is it going to erase? So we're creating an ecosystem of learning. Yeah. So an NFT will give you a free class to like Metaverse 101. Mm. And then the next time you'll get the next step, how do you create your avatar? So we're creating an ecosystem. We're creating all kinds of things that you could see we, on the bottom left here. There's Tony Robbins who came in just to do one of his business mastery big shot conferences and he liked the company so much he said I'm going to be an investor and I'm going to be like an advisor like because this is really cool G man he came in on the right we have all these art walks we've launched people's careers I have a song from David Bowie that's never been released yeah. and I, it's 20 years and so we're going to be planning something really special and not just saying here's a song with a, a funny picture we're going to give people the music so they themselves can each do their own version. If you're a parent and your son is playing guitar mm -hmm. and you're going to spend 80 grand a year to send him to UCLA or right. NYU, like think of like the gift of giving him like a song where he can play with someone who changed the world, yeah. the world of music, the world of fashion, the world of creativity, the world of technology. So basically, uh, you know, this is something that I, I've never had a day job. Like, I'm, I'm not, I do what I love. I even have a jacket that says, do what you do love. Do what you love. And uh, that I, there's a great artist in Miami who just, everything is doing, like he'll paint, you know, shoes that say, do what you love. And so this is just so inspiring. Yeah. There's so much passion in it. Well, you are inspiring, Larry. Larry, can we give Larry a hand? Woo!